Hi, I'd like to show you a 3D clock I made, and it's inspired by Dan Schiffman's clock in his coding challenge number 74 from the coding train. Here's my clock. It's a 3D clock. There's an hour hand, minute hand, second hand, and then this thing that goes around once each second. There's sound. Let me put the sound on. And everything's made out of cylinders, 3D cylinders, uh, even the hands. Now listen to what happens when we come up to the next minute. You hear another sound, an octave lower, for five seconds. Okay, let's turn the sound off. I might do the same thing for the hour hand. Every hour, maybe you'd get a, another tone, an octave lower than that. Let's look at how this works. Here's the code. This is written in JavaScript with P5JS. And P5JS programs usually have a setup function and a draw function. Those are here. And then I have uh, divided the code into several other functions, draw tick marks, draw axle, and so forth. There's a lot of state that uh, the program maintains, and many of these are options or kind of uh, adjustable configuration parameters. So you can control a lot about um, how everything looks. Um, the colors and the length of the hands, the thicknesses of the hands, the length and thickness and color of the axle, the tick marks, um, the amount of oscillation here, you see it looks like an oscillating fan kind of turning on the, turning on the Y axis. That's all adjustable. That's what these numbers are, these values. Um, okay, so let's look in setup here. The, we create a new sound object. So the sound object is here and it uses an oscillator, a P5 oscillator with the sine type of uh, waveform. And there are two oscillators, one for the seconds and one for the minutes. And this function here gets called for every frame of animation in order to set sounds depending on um, where we are, where things are. Uh, back to setup. Here are the colors for the ticks, the hour, minute, and second. And we create the canvas. We always fill the um, width of the, the, we fill the client width. Now here's the draw function or method. And it's broken down into several pieces. Let's just do this. We have quite a few functions inside here. Um, so how do we draw? Well, what is it? What does it kind of boil down to? We draw the tick marks and we draw the axle. So the tick marks on the outside, we draw the axle and then we draw the hands. So that's what it does. There are lots of calculations here to figure out angles and uh, milliseconds past the current second and so forth. Uh, so what should we look at first? How about draw axle? That's pretty simple. Um, we're going to draw a cylinder, and if we just drew a cylinder, it would not be aligned on the z-axis like you see this is. So rotating it on x by half a circle, or actually one quarter, 90 degrees. Um, rotating it on x here brings it uh, so that it's aligned with the z-axis. And then we just call the cylinder function to make a cylinder with the thickness that we want and the length that we want. All right, that's draw axle. Let's look at draw tick marks. This one's a little more complicated because of the fact that this thing is moving around and around and around. That's some of the trickiest logic in here. Um, but this is the main code down here. There are two other functions that help. There are um, a certain number of tick marks, there's 60. 
and this loop goes through each one and um, rotate, translate, rotate, and the tick marks are made with cylinders. Then these other functions help to compute uh, or do compute the thickness of the tick mark at the given index and then the height. And I think I won't go into these in detail. Draw a hand is not too complicated. It takes the color passed in and sets that as the fill color. And we calculate the angle of the hand and then we rotate, translate, draw the cylinder and pop. Um, agitate clock. I call it agitate because it reminds me of a washing machine agitator, that kind of sinusoidal pattern, the smooth back and forth. And this is a rotate Y, and there's an angle computed from the time that feeds into sine, and then we map that into a rotation angle. And we call agitate clock with this cycles per second. So uh, it takes um, 10 seconds for the complete turning cycle. And uh, how far does it turn on the y-axis here? Well, um, pi over 8. So that's a 16th of a circle. 2 pi is a full circle. Um, Okay, and then here, key pressed. If we press the S key, we toggle the sound. And um, anything else I want to show here? Um, the code is here in my GitHub repository, DC Brichetti. It's in web games. It's not really a game. Um, you can get the code there. You can also find, uh, I have an account on CodePen if you want to just play with the code with the same name here, DC Brichetti. Okay, that's it. I hope you like my 3D clock. See you next time.